Hey guys, this is Echo Saurix and you're checking out a tech tip on Sonic Academy. So in this video, we're going to be looking at how you can utilize a mixing technique called serial processing, or more specifically in this video, serial compression to help mix certain aspects of your mix. And in this video, we're going to be looking at how we can use serial compression to make your kick just sit in the mix how it needs to and add that special magic that we all want from a kick sound. So before we get going a little bit about serial processing or serial compression, it is a very simple technique to actually use. And I feel like it gets left out of, of the fray a lot because you hear about parallel compression and parallel processing all the time because all the cool kids are doing it. But there's a simpler, sometimes almost more effective, depending on what sound source you do this on, how you do it tool and that's serial processing and it's something that you may do instinctively that you may have never realized but there are some general guidelines that you can use to make the process more effective. So all serial processing slash serial compression is is throwing on two compressors in line or on the actual audio source itself in your DAW. So the DAW I am using is Logic X. It looks funky because I have a Pro Tools skin on it. I don't know why I did that, but at the time it seemed like a wonderful idea. So that's why Logic looks like Pro Tools now. Anyway, I digress. So this idea is to use two similar types of effects, like compression, EQ, whatever it may be, in series, which means one after the other. And the reason you do this is because certain plugins and certain effects may do one thing very well. And they may, for lack of better words, just be awful at doing another thing well. So take, for instance, uh, compressors. Some compressors that are emulated after their real-world uh, analog counterparts, if it's modeled after an optical compressor, it's not going to be your first choice on most kick or drum sounds. Now, if it's modeled after like a VCA or maybe even an FET-style compressor, that may be better. But however, there are certain characteristics to an optical compressor that can be very musical on a kick sound. So what I've done in this video and for this demo is that I've used two compressors on my track, on my kick track. And one is the Native Instruments slash Softube VC160. And the other is the default compressor inside of Logic set to an optical, an optical or vintage opto as it's called algorithm. Now there's a reason why I did this, and anytime you do serial processing or serial compression, you shouldn't just throw on two plugins and series just because you can. It's you need to do it when you're addressing specific problems. So with my kick, I made it in Sonic Academy kick, and it sounded great when I had just a couple instruments. But as I built up this demo, it the the bass end got kind of filled out quickly with bass sounds and synths and all that stuff. So I needed more oomph to the kick. And using compression is one way that you can do that. You can make it have more energy while keeping the volume relatively the same. Well, with these two compressors, they have different strong suits at different parts of the audio signal. So this DBX160 or this VC160, is modeled after the DBX160. It's one of the most famous hardware compressors of all time. And basically it was used to, it's a, it was kind of like a one trick pony. As you can see here on the screen, you don't have a lot of flexibility. The amount of knobs and options you have compared to the Logic compressor over here, it just pales in comparison. But that's a good thing because it, what it does, it does very well. And I love when a plugin does one or two things very well because then I don't spend an hour with ADD tweaking every knob, seeing what every little difference does. I just know, okay, this plugin will, will sound great on a kick, a clap, or a snare. Moving on. And that's what the VC160 kind of emulates. So there's some other uh, software emulations of the DBX160. Just Google them if you're curious. I just pref I, I like the uh, VC160 by Native Instruments and Softube. Sounds musical to my ears, but it's by no means the it's so de facto software emulation for the DBX160. So the DBX160 is often characterized as adding that thwap or that thump to your drum sounds. So that's why it's on here. And then I set up a optical compressor with some distortion happening to affect kind of the latter half of my kick sound that came from Sonic Academy's kick plugin. 
And when you put those two together, you get a nice musical kick sound. So let's listen to this track or this demo real quick. All right, so that's what we're working with. And you can see here that I have the, uh, I had the serial compression active when I was running through that little demo right there. Now, I will say that serial compression and serial processing absolutely does not replace parallel New York style processing or compression or EQ. It's just something to have kind of in the utility belt to use with it. So what I have on this final, almost the final version of this kick, I have an instance of a FabFilter Pro C doing some pretty heavy distortions, pretty heavy lifting on a bus sense. We have some parallel compression. Now I'll play that all together now. All right, so there it is with the parallel processing with the serial compression. So by no means should you think that serial processing should replace parallel processing. It's something that can sometimes be used together. And this instance with a really clean kick that doesn't have a lot of grit to it, or there's not a sample layered with it, like a, like a hi-hat or some percussive element, it can be really cool to push the energy and the dynamics of that kick. All right, so let's turn off the parallel compression for now. So we can talk about the settings here in the two compressors that we have running in series. So the first one we already kind of talked about is this VC160. And it's just a kick preset that I've tweaked. And it's just adding some girth to the kick. Off and on. So I like what it's doing to kind of the click part, like the kick tick. And then this compressor from Logic, if we look at what it's doing, I have the attack pretty high. It's about 16 and a half milliseconds. Well, for a kick, that's high. For vocals and things like that, not necessarily. But around 20 milliseconds for a kick is quite high. I have the release kind of pushed up. I don't have a huge ratio. It's in the two range. I could probably push it a little more. But the main thing that this is doing is compressing the latter half of the kick's signal. And then I've added some distortion to it with the uh, little distortion module inside of this compressor. So if we solo this compressor with a kick, and off, but in isolation, when you check these compressors in series, you don't get the full effect. You need to hear both of them in a row. That's the whole point of serial compression or serial, serial processing. So if you check things by soloing and turning off like I just did, you might get an inaccurate read or listen through of what you're trying to hear. All right, let's play that in the mix now and bring back in the parallel compression. All right, so it sounds pretty cool. If I were to finish the actual mix of this kick, I would probably throw on a transient shaper somewhere in the mix, and I may even uh, kind of sidechain a sub frequency using a tone generator to it to add a little bit more sub. But for the actual kick itself, I like how it's hitting. I like how it has some good energy and dynamics. I like how it's popping out through the quite dense mix that I have started with all these different synth leads stacked together and these three different or four different bases. All right, guys, there's a look at how to use serial compression to kind of focus in more on your kick sound that you're after. Like I said before, I'm Echo Soundworks. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time.